Hello, my beloved USU listeners, my sacred souls. Thank you for being here today. I I am so excited about our guest. She has become a really dear special friend. Feels like a soul sister I've known my whole life. And I'm really, I'm really eager for you to listen to this conversation. We're going to be talking about values. We're going to be talking about healing and a lot more that I think is going to really help you to dig into your best self. So let me introduce you to Mary Beth Highland. Mary Beth believes that we all share the desire to know and return to our authentic selves at work, at home, and within. We're on a quest to become a bona fide cowgirl. Oh, on a quest to become a bona fide cowgirl and retreat owner. Let me say that again, because she's the cowgirl, although I kind of want to be one. She works with individuals, couples, and organizations to create a deeper sense of purpose through value-based lifestyles and workplace cultures. Mary Beth is a woman of valor, extraordinaire, healer, incredibly gifted in the world of values and how to apply those in your life. And I have had the pleasure of both doing a values workshop with Mary Beth, and we're going to talk about in a really cool session that I did with her in the realm of healing and finding your power animal. We'll go into that. So hang in. So happy to have you here, Mary Beth. I am so excited. Yay. I know. I'm so grateful to be here. It feels like I'm at home every time we're together. Oh, I love that. That is so, thank you for saying that. I feel the same. So we were just chalk talking for quite a while before I realized, you know, we're we're doing a podcast. Let's like actually record it. And I, I, (laughs) I said, one of the things with you, the minute we start chatting, I feel like, um, I don't want to ever stop. And I just, Mm -hmm. you're such a, a, a open hearted, uh, uh, leader and lover of life and of the animal kingdom and of the whole planet. And, and I, there's so much I want to talk to you about. So I'm going to, I'm going to try to focus because we might need you back here again, girl. Okay. Well, I'm right. down and I'm excited to get, start the conversation today. Yay. Well, all right, let's talk about, I know you do like incredible work around values and how to tap into your values. I think it'd be interesting to talk a little bit about your story kind of growing up and how values have become so important to you mm-hmm. and how you use that in the world. Thank you for asking me. I don't, I actually don't think anybody has ever asked me that. Really? Lots of podcasts and, and lots of different interviews, um, specifically around how I got to the values work. So I have a background in um, social work and nonprofit management, and I always felt like I was very curious about humanity and really wanted to understand like what was the secret language and now I know it's energy right so much of it has to do with our energy it's like the language that we're not speaking but that's Mm. happening through us and I had actually a a pretty um, I don't want to say toxic but a pretty challenging upbringing with an abusive father so I had an experience where I had a mom who was a mental health worker Um, She actually specifically worked with people who were experiencing traumatic abuse and um, and a father who was a diagnosed narcissist, narcissistic personality disorder, and was very effective at um, being abusive when my mom wasn't around and then using phrases like, if you tell anyone, we'll get divorced and it will be your fault. So in my home, just describing, my dad was actually a rocket science scientist by profession. Wow. So, right. So I had this art therapist mom, this rocket scientist dad, you can imagine like the, just the way the brains work, Um, very different sets of values, very different sets of values. I didn't know that was the language then. Mm. So even to the point where, you know, my mom was an activist and an ally for people of all different backgrounds, challenges, races, ethnicities. That was her work. She worked in trauma disorders. And my dad was racist and judgmental and somebody who really wanted to make clear lines and separate and divide people into categories. Mm -hmm. Um, So as a kid growing up, it was this experience of like, I don't get this. Like, I don't understand this. I knew that I aligned with my mom in her belief system and and the way that she was showing up in the world. And whenever I was 
with my dad and there wasn't anybody else to witness this abuse that was going on, it was an experience of just like knowing deeply, like this isn't right. I'm never going to be this. I'm never going to do this. And I can't wait until I'm old enough that I don't ever have to have a relationship with this man again. And um, it was, it was an experience that as I went through school and I started to learn more of the words and phrases around things and talking about our differences and our similarities that eventually I stumbled upon the concept of values. Mm. And when I went to the place where I started my own business, which is about five years ago, when I got to that part of my journey, which is like fast forwarding a whole bunch from what I just said, um, it was an experience of wanting to create space where people could share their stories and understand how much we have in common, right? That we have so much more in common than we ever talk about because we always stay on the surface. So I wanted to figure out how can I create an experience? And I started off by saying, well, you know, I'd love to create experiences around values. So, you know, I know you and I both share the value of unity with nature in a big way. So how amazing could it be if we gathered people that all value new with nature? And I did a series of listening sessions before I started this work. And one of the women in the group just said, well, you know, our values are shaped by our life experiences. And it was like a lightning bolt just went right through my body. And then it unlocked all of this wisdom and understanding like this is what you need to do this is your what you're here for and i immediately started getting downloads around you need to create an experience where people can map out their life experiences and then see how it shaped their values both from the highs and the lows and everything in between because as much as my mom shaped my values for the better my dad did too because knowing what you don't want is just as powerful, if not more powerful, than knowing what you do want, particularly in your younger years. And so a lot of people wanna hide and, and disown the pieces of things they didn't want. And when we can actually own and celebrate them, it becomes an incredibly empowering story. It becomes the difference between your story owning you and you owning your story, right? And it is this freeing experience to say, I, I get why I really connect with Julie and I don't really connect with fill in the blank, right? It's not because they're a bad person or I'm a better person, it's because we don't share these values, right? And that's okay, and I can respect that, right? And I can, I can respect that. So it's been a really beautiful journey and first doing it in my own life, going deep within. And I primarily work in workplace culture. And so it's been this incredible opening Mm. Something that went from a passion project of, oh, I'll just help a couple people once in a while through some volunteer work on this, yeah. to this being the essentially the sole focus of my whole business. And I primarily help organizations identify what their values are and then learn how to make their behaviors in alignment with those values, whether that's policy, procedure, the way we show up with each other, the conversations, meetings. How is that actually in alignment with your values instead of a nicely branded poster on the wall so that people can be activated mm -hmm. intrinsically at work instead of just a check the box, all right, we have that done. It's like, no, you, you, values work's never done. Yeah. So, yeah. That, that's a longish, shortish oh, version it. of how I got here. <laughs> I love it. Well, and, and what you said, I think is really important. I'm thinking always for, for you all that are listening, it's like you said, you often learn from what you don't want, from the values you see that you do not want to, that you do not want to carry forth. Um, do you have, I always been thinking like, what's a little activity for someone listening who's like, I'm not sure of my values. Um, I think like, okay you know, kindness or, you know, you could think, all right, being loving, but how, is there a way that someone could really quickly identify their values? I mean, I know you have a lot of ways. <laughs> yeah, I have tons of ways. So one of the things that I recommend to folks who aren't interested in going through like a big workshop or doing a, you know, diagnostic or anything like that, which obviously I have tools for those things, but um, I would recommend just spending a day, like dedicate a day and get a little like notepad or a little journal, something that you can keep in your pocket. And every time you have a strong feeling about, I love this, I feel alive, this is great. 
write down what that experience was. And then the same, like on the opposite end, like, oh, I feel really drained. This is not an experience that's good for me. Write those down. And then start to look at distilling those experiences into one word. So for example, um, if you were somebody who um, at work, you went into a meeting and you had a whole bunch of new ideas that you were presenting and you were super excited about presenting these new ideas and then you were shut down, right? And so it was like, ooh, that's, yeah. I didn't get, I didn't get to do that thing. Right. So depending on how you, what, it, what part of that made you feel bad or good, it could be I, immediate values that come to mind. And that kind of example is like innovation, creativity, and then the, the same for the other side. Like if you get shut down, you didn't get to be innovative. You didn't get to be creative. And perhaps even sense of belonging is a part of that too. You know, feeling like this isn't appreciated in this environment. Um, and even, I mean, some of the more obvious are, we were just talking about this before, about how we feel when we walk in nature and how it just makes us come alive. And it doesn't really matter where we are in nature that we can feel a connect connection to it deeply. And so that's the kind of thing. It's like, oh, I walked to the park and walking to the park made me feel amazing. I don't know why, right? But then you can spend some time and start to figure out what are some of those words around it. So it's certainly not like a quick, like, oh, quick one and done kind yeah. of thing, but I think it's actually a really beautiful exercise for us to, to all experience in life. And because and, and, then it gives us the words and the language around understanding why that clicked and why it didn't. I say to, to folks all the time, you're not drained because you're doing too much. It's because you're doing too little of what reflects your values. Mm, I love that. Yeah. And that's the same for companies, right? People aren't drained at work necessarily because they're doing too much. It's because they're doing too little of those things that were promised to them as values of the organization. Mm, doing too so, little what energizes yeah. 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 That's crazy. And, and that's not to say, you know, we should be working 24 seven and that's what it means. If you're living your values, you're always going to never be drained. That's not it at all. But it is the kind of thing that I could be on this conversation with you for hours and not think anything of it because so many of my values are activated right now. Oh, that's got, I love it. Totally. It, and there's something you said, I think is important too, with the giving the name to it. Um, this is a, it just, just came to mind. I'll just share really quickly. Cause I, I, um, this might be a place to look too. I had a, uh, my mom's side, my grandmother who, um, she has passed on a long time ago, but one of the things I always just loved her energy, her being around her. She just, she's one of the most kind, mm -hmm. loving, kind of elegant, graceful women. I she didn't say, I never said a mean word about anybody ever. And I remember, and I'm thinking about it, it just hit me like, oh, one of my values is, I always think of Mr. Rogers who says the best way to be successful is be kind, be kind and be kind, right? It's kindness. She embodied kindness. And I've realized that has become like one of my core values. And so maybe even looking at, I was just thinking like your parents, but also, you know, teachers or oh, grandparents. Totally. You and I. <laughs> Like you didn't even know this just, I literally, literally last weekend just launched something called Legacy Lens. Oh, I love it. Oh. And it's all about families oh. looking where their values came from, right? Yeah. Like how their values were passed down from generation to generation, almost like looking at a family tree. And instead of just seeing their names, it's like, oh, oh sense of belonging. I got that from my grandma, right? She embodied that. Right. And so, um, it was very interesting. So, you know, like I said, I always start with myself. So we literally just launched last weekend and, and my sister and my mom and I are the first group to go through the program. We're going to do another session with each other this Saturday. And it was so powerful because even just having a conversation about one value and hearing how we all defined it so differently, like you could have, you could be talking about the same word. So let's just say independence. Right. And the way I defined it is different than the way my sister defines it, the way that my mom defines it. And then sharing the stories of independence in our lives and then sharing the stories of our family members who we felt embodied independence. And mm -hmm. 
some of the experiences we had with them where they were embodying those values. It was, it's really cool. It's like a really powerful. So one of the exercises that I do with people often is a combination of what are the milestone moments in your life, which you obviously experience when you yeah, do life it. lens workshop and seeing how you can put your values, uh, connect those to those experiences, but then also looking at the influencers. So whether they're family members or neighbors or teachers or friends or yep. whatever, um, whoever in your life, and then seeing what they embodied. So Mr. Rogers, a great example, like how many people's lives were changed because of Mr. Rogers and his value of kindness? Oh, that's so, I love this. I was just thinking between him and like Louise Hay, who, who raised me, um, who like now I do the mirror work, right? Like what, that's so, that's brilliant. So we'll have all Thank that you. information. Legacy lens, because you do life lens, love lens, right? Yes, yes. Love life lens, lens for couples, life lens for individuals, legacy lens for families. You know, this is really it was powerful when I did it, but it's really important right now, I think, because we get to choose kind of how we're going to decide what our values are that we want to live. And it might be, you know, I have these values and I'm going to take this one in too. We get to choose that. I love, love, love that you're adding the legacy. What a beautiful way to honor like past ones, family that I love that. That is beautiful. Oh, Julie, this is a whole nother 10 hour conversation because I have a whole vision on how you can honor people even through obituaries and services and things that we use the lens of their values to celebrate them. Oh. You know, I have this whole vision of like beginning to end of life and how we can honor values throughout the whole. Oh. I love that. Well, my, I don't yeah. mean to, hopefully when I'm in my, you know, past hundred, but I was like, oh, mine would have like a lot of crystals and, and <laughs> some chandeliers and just pretty things and kindness. <laughs> oh yeah. That's so cool. That's yeah. really, what a beautiful yeah, what a beautiful way to honor people and your family. And, yeah. and, and I love like harvesting what you want, what you don't want, like from your dad. Um, yeah. It sounds like your dad, that experience. I mean, I remember when you told me the story, I was horrified to hear what you went through, but also like amazed with how you shifted and just like realized how you can actually totally shift, heal, change and help people in that. Great. It's, he was my greatest teacher. Mm. He was my greatest teacher and he passed away six years ago, five and a half or six years ago. And a lot of people ask me like, is that why you're able to talk about it? And like, is that why you can do all this? And yeah. I can't tell you the answer to that. Cause I don't know, right. I don't know what I would or wouldn't be doing if he was still here, but I, I didn't speak to him for a very long time before he passed away. And um, it was a really empowering and powerful experience to recognize that even if you're born into a situation as the child, right? Like you do, you get to choose the boundaries that you set around your well-being. Yeah. And then you also get to have the choice to not be a victim. So you get to mm. learn how to find the wisdom and the gems and all of the lessons that you learned the hard way that ultimately make you the incredible, powerful human being you are now. And so the re I know that the reason I can go into particularly um, toxic workplace environments, you know, places where people are lashing out or whatever, I can do that work because I was raised by that person. Mm. It doesn't make me uncomfortable because that's what I know, right? Like I'm very comfortable in those spaces and I never would have that gift if yeah. I didn't grow up because I, I was constantly trying to learn how to adapt and shift and chameleon my way into him not hurting me. So I learned how to really pay attention to his demeanor, his facial expressions, tone of voice. Um, I learned how to make jokes. I learned how to, what I could do really well to get him to maybe change a little bit. Um, and, and I didn't realize that's emotional intelligence. Right. That's right. I was just going to say, it's exactly right. You were like trained in it from day one without realizing it. And it yeah. can serve now. Yeah. yeah. And now I honor that and I celebrate that. And that's a huge part of like my greatest powers. And so it, yep. I, I'm not saying it like, like I'm just saying this because it's the right thing to say, but like truly yeah. greatest, yeah. some of my greatest lessons and greatest wisdom that I'm so grateful for came from those experiences. And it took a lot of work to get there. 
Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. And to move through it at a place where you can be grateful. That's really, and I think for anyone tuning in with any kind of trauma or tough situation or the way you were raised and to, to be able to, to see it and to be grateful for it. And I just keep seeing you like distilling those gifts out, you know, and the values that, that is true. That's healing. That's mm -hmm. a whole different level of uh, being able to be as a human being. Speaking of healing, I'd love to talk about some of the healing work that you also do. You said this early on. I love it. You said, I don't know if I'm getting it right. You said the language we're not talking about, but the language that we speak is energy. Yeah. I love that. Um, I love that. And you know that so well. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like one of our it's favorite why we, It's why we talk for hours and don't even realize it because the energy is so high. So true. I love it. It's so, it's, well, and it's, it's fascinating to me because what, what I'm finding is now we're getting more science to back this up, which, you know, it's helpful. It's helpful. I, I, it feels to me like, of course, but it helps to have the science piece. But I think what you are doing also with energy and healing, I, I would love for you to share because that's a whole other aspect. And I think it's, it's connected, it uh, is, but a little, it's yeah. like a dotted line connection, <laughs> but you know, I, look, I had done the life lens with you and I loved it. And then I did this incredible experience to find my power animal to guide me. But before I give it all away, I think it's better if you share a little, because people are going to be like, wait, what are you talking about? Yeah. What the heck is a power animal? What yeah. is a power animal? But listen, you guys, listen, this is really cool stuff. Uh, yeah. uh, so, you know, quick ish version to get to how that has, is connected to ev everything. So I've been on a really intentional journey of healing with myself, as I just described some of the examples of, of work that I've been doing in that way. And so I've done that through therapy. I've done that through mindfulness. I've done that through a whole bunch of different modalities. And uh, last year, almost a year and a half ago, it ultimately led my husband and I to an experience where we went and did plant medicine, specifically ayahuasca at a retreat center in Costa Rica. And if, for anybody who's not familiar with it, it is a um, it's a and it's an experience that's very intense. It's the most intense experience I've ever gone through in my life. And it's also the most profound and the most healing and the most powerful thing I've ever experienced because I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. I I knew from a high level, but I didn't realize the the depth and how much it was going to transform me as a as a person and, and as a connection with my soul. And all of the ceremonies were conducted by shamans. It was, a, it was a week long and it was four ceremonies throughout the week. And through the, the ceremonies, I just started to fall in love with shamanism. I just had this strong connection, you know, similar to I described that lightning bolt moment of like, I need to do this values work. It was similar. It just struck me really hard of like, you need to go deeper into the shamanic work. And so um, it was an experience too, where we didn't realize we were both thinking it, but I said to my husband one day, um, hey, I don't know if you're feeling any of this, but I have just been having really intense visuals of you as a shaman and leading these ceremonies. And he was like, I've had the same thing. I just didn't want to say anything because I didn't know if I was just too, you know, ramped up from the experience we just went through. So anyway, that led us to really going deep into shamanistic um, work and learning the core principles of shamanism. So we study through something called the Foundation for Shamanic Studies. It's a wonderful institution that is really about core shamanism. So not... Um, from a specific tribe or um, it's, it's basically the essential principles that are consistent across a whole variety of peoples who practice shamanism. And shamanism is really just uh, an individual who uses the wisdom of nature and the wisdom of spirit guides to have healing. And so one of the things that we learned through going through the trainings through the foundation were power animal ceremonies. Mm. And that is what Julie was just referring to, which has been so incredible. And when we went through the training, we each received our power animals in the ceremony and were taught how to do that for others. And 
when I had that experience myself, you know, you kind of go in a little skeptical, like, what am I like, cause it's real. Like, it's like, right. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going to see anything. I don't know what this is. I don't know how I'm going to use this. I don't know what this is going to do. Um, and it was just this incredible experience of going deeper within, going deeper into your intuition, recognizing that there are spirit guides and helpers here for us. They've always been here. And once you can make a direct connection with them, that they're there to serve you and be with you in all types of, of situations in life, the highs, lows, everything in between. And um, my power animal, my primary power animal is a deer, a big stag. And um, it was an experience where at first I rejected the deer because I was like, well, the deer is not powerful. They're like dead on the side of the road all the time. Like I was super in my like skeptical blah, 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 you know, like all the, so funny. Well, I don't want that power animal. And through learning how to go on journeys, so shamanic journeys, there's a whole process around that, but everybody has access to this. This isn't like a special thing. This isn't like, oh, my husband and I are special people. Everybody has access to being able to go on these journeys without any plant medicine or anything else to get there. You just use your own, um, your intuition and you guide yourself through these experiences. The drum often is getting you there through the sound and vibration of a drum. But um, when I went on my journey to meet my power animal and to start to build a relationship, um, he said to me when I walked out, uh, I was like, all right, I got to like figure out what the deal is here. I'm sorry. Like, I'm just not into you. <laughs> and the deer walked up with this incredible rack and all these birds living in the rack and slowly walked forward and said, you don't think this is powerful? And I was like, it's very powerful. It's very powerful. And then, and then said, what you focus on is the dead deer on the side of the road. And what you don't realize is that if you simply lift your head up, mm -hmm. you would know that there were thousands more of us thriving. And that's where you need the most help because you focus on what's wrong and where there's lack. And I represent abundance. Whoa. I couldn't make that up. Like I, I couldn't make that up. I didn't know that the deer represented abundance. And then when I went and started to do some like, you know, fact checking of my own, it does, it actually does. And so um, this all could sound really crazy to, to people who are not familiar with this kind of work, but I got to tell you that it has been one of the greatest blessings of my life to be able to connect with and get guidance from my power animal um, whenever I'm feeling a lack of power. And there is a distinction between power animals and spirit animals. Right. So power animals you receive primarily through shamanic journeys where a shaman goes on the journey on your behalf. So my husband, James, did that for Julie. I, I was the one that um, was drumming through the ceremony. Um, and, a, and a power animal is specifically there for you. They've been with you your whole life and they're there for you to call on when you need power. Whereas a spirit animal is sort of like a guiding spirit that's really just there as a reminder or as a way to kind of direct you from one place up to another. Whereas power animals specifically like, I need to call in the power in this moment. I need power now. Please come be with me. Ah, so awesome. <laughs> so, let me, and let me, just, I, I want to say I was, what's so funny is for a moment, um, I got, I went back to the moment of when we did that. And, um, I just want to say like, if you're thinking about this, Mary Beth and her husband, James are amazing. We actually did it virtually because I, I was going to do it with you in person, but we didn't have the option and it was crazy powerful. And, you know, for me, I have to tell you, I had the same, I was like, gorilla, what? <laughs> like a, what? <laughs> okay. I was like the big hairy, like animal, right. I felt really bad too. I was like, I'm sorry, no disrespect. I mean, my first reaction was like, okay. And then I was like, oh, and you read the description. I'm like, oh my goodness. That is like the perfect, I would never, what's so cool is I wouldn't have ever come up with that with myself. And I mm -hmm. just a little bit of connecting, you know, that, that, that animal for me has, um, I had a lot of shifts and, and miracles. I'm serious. Like mm -hmm. soon after that experience with you guys, which I can fill you on later, but yeah. you know, I'll, I'll just 
say here, seriously, shift, you know, they say miracles is a shift in perspective and a, and a new belief. Mm -hmm. And I literally like soon after, um, and it just, it was so powerful and in such a, such a great way to access, I feel like guidance that, that, you know, we often are overlooking. I mean, I was not raised to know about power animals or spirit animals. Nor was um, I, nor was I. Yeah. Not my parents would have been fine. They were really fine with anything. I, I mean, that's a different story, but <laughs> that was not, they didn't bring it into my consciousness. That's for sure. Um, and I have found it to be so helpful. I love what you talked about though, with the idea of what shamanism is, mm -hmm. is this using wisdom of nature and the spirit guides. Um, before we wrap, can you talk a little bit about spirit guides and the power of nature? And I know it's a huge value of yours. Um, there's a big old wisdom tree behind you. Yeah. Like I think for people right now, it could be a very grounding, yeah. um, healing thing to do is to just, I feel like whatever you're going to say could really help people. So I'm going to let you just say whatever is in your heart. About Immediately that. a tree practice came to mind that I'd love to, to share with anybody who feels turned on by this in any way, right? If, if you're like, hmm, what is that? And I'm curious. Um, so I have particularly have a very deep connection with trees. They're, they're obviously the source of us being alive. They create the air around us. Um, and there's one tree in particular that I, I have a relationship with. And I created this experience uh, with the tree, with listening to my spirit guides of like, just like something in my intuition said, like, go do this and then try this and then try this. So as you can imagine in, in the work that I do, particularly in the workplace, it can be really heavy. It can be very, it can feel very um, like a burden to carry at times because you're expected to kind of cure all the ailments of sometimes hundreds of people institution. And so that's a big that's a big responsibility. And so everyone's talking to you about all the things that are wrong, right? All the time. And, and so I didn't know what can I do? How can I start to use wisdom of my spirit guides and nature as a way to take care of myself through this experience? Because I know that it doesn't serve anyone if I carry that with me. That's not going to make them better. It's not going to make me better, right? And so I was guided to this practice, which really anyone can do. And it's really beautiful. Um, one day I was particularly feeling overwhelmed and I was like, I got to get in nature. I got to get in nature. And um, I went on a walk and I, and I just kept walking until into a park space until I felt a connection with a tree. So that might feel like, what does that even mean? A connection with a tree. Um, it just felt like I was welcome. Like the tree felt like it was inviting me to come spend time with it. And that could just be like a little thing, a little tingle, or maybe you already have a relationship with a tree that's, that's meaningful to you. And what I, what I do when I, if, it, if it's a tree that I haven't spent time with first, and this is a part of a shamanic practice that, um, that I've learned that really, again, anyone can do this. Um, you start by introducing yourself to the tree. So this is not like an out loud conversation. It could be if you really wanted to be, but for me, it's a, it's in my mind. I'm saying this, you know, to the tree, I put my hand on the tree and I say, hi, I'm I'm Mary Elizabeth Highland. That's my legal name, right? I'm Mary Elizabeth Highland, daughter of, and I, you say your parents' full names. I would, I, may I be in ceremony with you? And then you just wait until you get a feeling of like, yes, right? You want to get, you want to feel the yes. And then one of the things that I learned from another shaman, actually somebody here in Baltimore is just the most incredible soul. She said the, the way that she lets go of energy that isn't hers is that she gives it back to nature mm. and that nature has the ability to naturally pull the toxins out, put it back in the ground and then turn it back into abundance, love, beauty, right? Mm. Life. And it just naturally pulls the toxins out. And so like that, that's why you ask permission to the thing that you're giving the energy to. So, cause you're going to give it toxic energy <laughs> or whatever, however you want to categorize it. Right. Then you take your hands, put them on the tree, and then your third eye and close your eyes and, and put it on the, on the tree itself. Mm. Long, deep breaths, right? Feel a deep connection to the tree. And then start to envision where in your body you're actually holding that energy. Wow. Give that energy a color. So for me, I give it red. 
And then starting with the roots of the tree. So if you can take your shoes off and really put your feet on the roots of the tree too. Um, giving the energy a, a color and seeing it in my body. I then third eye, hands, feet, all connected to the tree. I visualize the tree filling me up, filling me up, filling me up from the toes, like from the roots all the way to the top of my head mm. with clear light fluid. And then when I start to do deep exhales out, I see it pulling all of that liquid with the color, that's the red for me of the toxic, pulling it out, pulling it out, draining it out, draining it out, draining it out, and going into the tree and the tree taking it and putting it into the ground and releasing it for me. Wow. It's... I feel it happening. Like I feel it energetically. There are times where I can feel it coming out through my forehead. There's times that I feel it coming out through my hands, through my feet. Um, <clears throat> it's really wow. powerful stuff, but it only works if you believe it. Yeah, right, right, right. It's, it's like anything. It's like anything. Right. That is beautiful. What a beautiful, beautiful um, way to let go of energy. You don't want, what a, wow. I have not heard that one. I'm like, that's because my spirit guides taught me. I love, so beautiful. <laughs> so you guys, aren't you so glad you tuned in yeah. and you're still listening here? And if you are, congrats to you. And no, this is not, I don't think this is out there. I think this is totally, to me, this is like using Mother Earth and the energy. Look, we're all energy. You said it first. We're all energy. Nature, and this is something actually, if people really want to get like, you know, understand it, um, the Intention Experiment by Lynn McTaggart is an incredible book that gets into when you set intentions, mm -hmm. the power of that and how it affects, in fact, she has experiments with plants, with trees um, that, if, that have an effect with us and the plants. And there's, so this is so beautiful. Thank you. Amazing, amazing. I'm like, I'm going to go outside as soon as we're done. I'm going to try this. Yeah, like, it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's simple too, right? It's not this complicated thing. If you're somebody who regularly meditates and uses your breath as a tool for well-being, this would be an easy add-on, yeah. right? If, if yeah. this all is a totally new concept, I would actually recommend just like visualizing with your breath on the inhale in and visualizing like mm. your branches coming out of your arms and your exhale, your roots going down to the ground. And so you're not actually necessarily connecting with a tree, but you're starting to connect with it in your inner work. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, trees, I mean, so healing. As you said, they give us life. I mean, really, we forget that so often. That yeah. is Oh my gosh. So love talking to you. So like fun. Always. That was beautiful. You are amazing, Mary Beth. I didn't know it was Mary Elizabeth, but I'm going to call you Mary Beth. Yeah, please. That's what I enjoy. Mary Beth. Yeah, we'll go with Mary Beth. Um, thank you for sharing so, so much wisdom here about how to find your values, how to add more healing for yourself, how to tap into nature. And I just have to say anybody that's thinking about the power animal experience or, or the life lens or the love lens, like definitely go connect with Mary Beth. We'll have that all in the show notes too. Um, so that people can reach out to you because you have such a, you've huge gifts that you're sharing. You really like so grateful for you. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you for having me today. Yay.